In this video, we're going to begin looking at Newton's second law, and we're going to look at how the force affects the motion of an object. Now, in the top left corner, I've written a statement for Newton's second law, which states that the sum of the forces does not equal zero. Now, for an object to be accelerating, or for it to be a dynamic system, the forces acting on an object will not equal zero. If you recall from the static engineering topic, in those instances we said that the sum of the forces must equal zero because the object wasn't moving, it wasn't accelerating. But when we introduce Newton's second law, or dynamic engineering systems, then we have a sum of forces that don't add up to zero, and that causes an object to accelerate. Now just underneath that I've got a diagram where we can see a force is acting on a block, and that block of material we're going to assume for the time being is on a frictionless surface. Now another way of writing Newton's second law is to say that the sum of the forces equals the mass times the acceleration. And you'll more frequently see that written just as the force equals mass times acceleration. Now this block that I have drawn here is going to have a mass, and we're going to call that mass m. And if we know the size of the force acting on the block, or the net force acting on the block, we can calculate its acceleration. And if we know the acceleration of the block, we can begin to bring in some of our other equations of motion. So taking our equation there, F equals MA, if we wanted to calculate the acceleration, and we knew the mass, and we knew the force, the acceleration would just be the force divided by the mass. And I know that because I would divide each side of that equation by the mass. And I would get acceleration equals F over M. However, as we look at that block of material, that isn't going to be the only force acting on the block, because if the block has a mass m, then it's also going to have a weight acting downwards of w. And the weight of an object is mass times gravity. Now hopefully you can see the connection there with our f equals ma, because weight is a force, and gravity is the acceleration due to freefall, or the acceleration caused by the Earth's gravitational pull on objects. So F equals MA and weight equals mass times gravity are essentially the same equation. If we look at the two forces acting on this block, you can probably see that the surface the block's resting on is going to prevent the block from accelerating in the downwards direction. It's resting on a solid surface. So what we end up with is a force that's equal and opposite to the weight, is called the normal reaction. You may have heard the statement that every force has an equal and opposite reaction, and that's where that term the normal reaction comes from. So now our forces in the y direction balance. There's no net force in the y direction, but we still have a net force in the x direction. That block is still going to accelerate from left to right. The final piece in the puzzle here for a block sliding on a surface, we said initially that the surface was frictionless, but sometimes we need to introduce a coefficient of friction. And the coefficient of friction relates to the friction of the surface. Now because no surface is truly frictionless, what we'll end up with is we'll end up with a force opposing that motion, acting in the opposite direction, which will be the friction force. It's normally called F subscript R for the resistive force. Now providing the pushing force F is larger than the friction force F subscript R, that block is still going to accelerate from left to right. So we need to be able to calculate the resistive force or the friction force, and the equation that we use for that is the resistive force FR is the coefficient of friction times the normal reaction. So let's just run through what some of those terms are and what their SI units are. The first term we've got is the pushing force F, and let's call that the applied force. And the SI units of any force is Newtons. Next we have the mass of the object, M, and mass is measured in kilograms. That's the SI units of mass. We have our acceleration, the acceleration of the block or the object. And our SI units for acceleration are meters per second squared, 
the same as when we looked at the equations of motion. We have W, which is weight. But weight is just a force, so that's also measured in newtons. And we have gravity, which is also an acceleration, so that's also measured in meters per second squared. So let's just add that there. G for gravity, or A for acceleration in meters per second squared. We have NR, which is our normal reaction. The units of that will also be newtons, therefore. We have our friction force, or our resistive force. That will also be measured in newtons. And our final variable is this letter here, mu, and mu is the coefficient of friction. And coefficient of friction is another one of these quantities that's actually dimensionless. It doesn't carry any units. So now we've seen the variables, we'll do an example of how we'd calculate the acceleration for a block of this type. So here we have some simple numbers. We have a block of mass 6.5 kilograms and a force of 95 newtons is being applied to it. In the first instance, we're going to neglect friction or we can state that the coefficient of friction is zero. We're assuming that surface doesn't cause any resistance to motion due to friction. So our calculation is nice and straightforward. We know that F equals MA from Newton's second law. Therefore, acceleration is F over M. In this instance, we have a force of 95 newtons, we have a mass of 6.5 kilograms, which gives us an acceleration of 14.6 meters per second squared. So the calculation there is very straightforward. But now let's assume that we have a coefficient of friction of 0.25. So before we can carry out our calculations, we need to work out the net force acting on that block. And the net force acting on that block is going to be the pushing force F minus the resistive force FR. Well, we don't yet know FR. We need to calculate FR, or the resistive force. And we said on the previous slide that that was the coefficient of friction times the normal reaction. We have another problem here because at the moment we don't know what the normal reaction is. But we do know that the normal reaction is equal and opposite to the weight. And we do know that the weight is mass times gravity. Therefore, our normal reaction is mass times gravity, 6.5. And the value for gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. It's a value that you use commonly in engineering, and it's worth remembering G is 9.81 meters per second squared. Now that gives us the normal reaction force, which is 63.765 newtons. So that's the normal reaction force. Now we can calculate our resistive force, because our resistive force is our coefficient of friction times that normal reaction. So our resistive force is 0.25 times 63.765, which gives us a resistive force of 15.94 newtons to two decimal places. So let's just refer back to our diagram and see what this means. What this means is we have 95 newtons of force trying to push the block that way. But we have 15.94 newtons of force resisting that, or pushing in the opposite way. Therefore, the sum of the forces, or the net force, is going to be 95 minus the 15.94. So the sum of the forces equals 95 minus 15.94. They're acting in opposite directions. So the sum of our forces is going to be 79.06 newtons. Now we know our net force, 
We know the mass of our object and we want the new acceleration of the object. So our calculation becomes very straightforward once again. We have the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. So rearranging that, we get the acceleration is the sum of the forces over the mass. Note that it's very similar to what we had up in the top right hand corner there, except this time we've got the sum of the forces because there's more than one force acting in the x direction. Therefore, the acceleration of the block is the sum of the forces, 79.06, over the mass, 6.5, giving an acceleration of 12.2 meters per second to one decimal place. Now let's just compare our answers. When we disregarded or ignored friction, the acceleration of the block was 14.6 meters per second squared. And that was caused by a net force of 95 newtons. When we included friction, and we had a coefficient of friction of 0.25, our net force ended up lower. Our net force was 79.06 instead of 95. And that gave rise to an acceleration of the block of 12.2 meters per second squared. So including friction has decreased the acceleration of the block because the net force acting on the block has been reduced.